Hades 360 at Mount Olympus is a gravity group wooden coaster that originally opened in 2005. Upon first opening, the coaster's name was just Hades. However, eight years after its opening, after it got brutally rough to many riders, the gravity group came in, did an extensive refurbishment, giving the ride a corkscrew, a brand new train, and renaming it Hades 360. Now, I personally have ridden over 220 roller coasters across the United States, and Hades 360 is certainly one of the most polarizing. I've heard people say that this ride is in their top five roller coasters overall, praising it for its great airtime, its fun corkscrew, and its long layout full of strong elements. However, I've also heard of many people saying that this ride is rough, it's just straight up uncomfortable, and they don't feel the airtime as much as others say. Me personally, I fall a little bit into both camps, but mostly I straddle the line of how I feel about Hades 360. But before we get into why, let's go into an overview of this ride's stats. It has a max height of 136 feet, a max drop of 140 feet, a top speed of 60 miles an hour, but if you do ask Mount Olympus, they'll tell you 70, however, that's just not a true statistic. It has one inversion and a maximum vertical drop angle of 65 degrees, with a track length of 4,746 feet of track. Now, whether you've been to Mount Olympus or just seen pictures of this place online, you will be able to tell that Hades 360 is by far their marquee attraction. It's huge, you can see it from everywhere in the park, and especially as you're driving up to the theme park on the road and especially in the parking lot. This coaster definitely does look unique as the majority of the layout takes place underground with just a small portion of the ride in the actual park and then an even smaller part of the ride out on an island in the middle of the parking lot. As you dispatch from Hades Station, you immediately start by going down a sizable drop. Gaining speed, you go around a tight curve which rises you up into a double down which provides solid airtime for the entire train. A lowly banked turn providing lots of laterals send you in to one final bunny hill before you rise up into the lift hill. This pre-lift section is just a taste of how the rest of the ride is going to be, as it is intense but still showing you how shaky the rest of the ride is going to be. As you crest Hades lift hill, you dive down your first drop, which is fairly steep and provides good air time to the entire train. You're sent underground into a series of bunny hills and bank turns, nothing too spectacular. However, you enter out onto the other side of the ride, getting thrown into a corkscrew and then immediately a bank turn, which is a fairly crazy series of elements on a wooden coaster. A big airtime hill sends you diving back underground back the way you came into another series of bunny hills and bank turns. Don't get too comfortable underground though as just like that you're popping out onto the original side where Hades started as you start that off with a double down which will be pretty much your last moment of airtime on the ride. You're sent into a couple of bank turns that just kind of run off speed and add length to the coaster. While not providing airtime, they are still enjoyable and fairly intense moments of the ride as you then curve up into your obnoxiously high final brake run ending Hades 360. After going over the layout, you may have noticed I've left out the elephant in the room, smoothness. Now in terms of Hades 360, I've heard people rave about this coaster so much and go as far to say it's their favorite wooden coaster of all time, and others say they won't even ride it a second time because of how much it beat them up. Now as I said earlier, I stand kind of in the middle. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this ride beat my ass. It was fairly uncomfortably rough and shaky throughout the entire ride, and even in those smooth and comfortable Timberliner trains, it just wasn't a super fun experience when it comes to smoothness. I was getting thrown around the seat and not in a good or aggressive way, it was just due to the way that the track wasn't really handling the train or the weight or the aggressiveness of the ride well at all. Now, I'm not usually one to get offended by the roughness of a coaster. Legend at Holiday World in the very back row, I think is still a great ride. Great American Scream Machine at Over Georgia is both boring and painful, but still a solid wooden coaster. And Hurler at Carowinds is both boring and painful and has so much jackhammering, it's just straight up uncomfortable. But I don't have anything against any of those rides. Hades 360 just brings uncomfortable to a whole nother level. Now, due to time constraints of my trip to Mount Olympus, I only got one ride on Hades 360 in the second row, which in theory is one of the smoothest seats on the coaster, 
But as far as I know, that beat me up pretty bad. It's almost hard to describe to somebody who hasn't ridden Hades, but it's a consistent and strong jackhammering that takes place all the way throughout the ride. If you're not on the lift hill or in the station, it's very noticeable, even on the slower sections of track like the pre-lift or the ending, and especially during the middle of the ride when you're underground and on the island. I'm not trying to bash Hades or anything, I still think it's a really fun coaster, but I'm just giving you guys tips of what I wish I knew before I went in to ride Hades 360. Now just for some overall things you should know before you ride Hades 360, this coaster only has one train. Combine that with incredibly slow operations, and on the day that we visited, there were less than 100 people in front of us in line, which in theory should have taken around 4 to 5 dispatches. However, combine a long ride with incredibly slow operations, that ended up taking us around 45 minutes just to get on the coaster. Not a good look for Mount Olympus, however, that is very consistent with every other review I've seen of this park. Slow operations are definitely a consistent theme. This coaster has no theming apart from a fairly cool entrance sign, and as far as merchandise goes, you're better off not even trying, as Mount Olympus's merchandise as a whole is terrible at best. Now for Hades 360's final score, it'll be receiving a 7.5 out of 10. This coaster, with a proper reprofiling and retracking, could get bumped up to a 9.5, as its layout is fantastic and has tons of potential. However, as it stands now, this ride is just too rough and uncomfortable to give it any higher of a score, albeit with a fun inversion, great bank turns, and really solid airtime. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. If you've ridden Hades 360, let me know your thoughts on this coaster in the comments down below. I'm Hangtime Thrills, and if you enjoyed, feel free to leave this video a like rating, and if you're new here, subscribe for more videos just like this on Hangtime Thrills every week. I'll catch you guys next time.